Blanket Club Knitters and welcome to the third instalment of this year's club. We are about to begin the April squares but before I talk to you about those squares and give you some tips and advice about how to knit them and what to watch out for, I just want to talk about a few other things beginning with the overseas parcels. Now if you've been reading my previous blogs uh, you will know that Royal Mail was hit by a cyber incident way back in January and this affected all of our overseas parcels. Now I'm really pleased to be able to say that as of this moment today there are just six parcels still to be delivered. All of the others have been successfully delivered to their destinations. So huge apologies to you if you are still waiting, but I am checking those tracking numbers every single day and I can see the progress of your parcels. They are making their way very slowly to your doorsteps. I think all of them now have actually left the UK and are on their way. Um, and I think all of them now are actually in the destination country. So it's just a question of them getting through customs and getting to your doorstep. But hopefully you won't have to wait too much longer and then all 560 members this year will be able to crack on with the patterns for this year and get knitting. We are in the process of putting together and parceling up part two of your knitting kit. So parcel twos are being assembled as I speak and we are prioritising our overseas parcels. Uh, Sue takes care of all of those and she is busy parceling them up and getting them ready to dispatch. Now we are going to send the six members that are waiting and I don't know by now hopefully by the time you read this you might not be waiting anymore but if you are we are going to get your parcel to posted ahead of everybody else's and then we will send out all of the rest of the overseas. Now since the cyber incident and I suppose one good thing if, if something good can come out of what happened. One good thing is that Royal Mail have now installed a sort of super duper, totally modern, up-to-date postal system. And whereas parcels before could take between two to four, maybe six weeks to arrive at destinations, because they can now clear customs while they're up in the sky instead of when it gets to the country. A lot of the countries are doing this now so that um, parcels are arriving a lot more quickly. My postmaster, who I spoke to this afternoon, said that uh, parcels to some places in Europe, like Germany, are taking two to three days. So that's a, a really good improvement on what it was before. So uh, we're going to get those parcel twos posted off overseas first then the UK they should be arriving around the beginning of May which is when you will need uh, those kits because there are some new colours of yarns and some new colours of beads in that parcel too so do watch out at the beginning of May for your postman who will be dropping your second parcel on your doorstep this will complete your knitting kit for this year so there are two squares out of the four this month that have options. Uh, there's an option one, which is your more tricky square to knit or your option two. So it's up to you to decide which one you want to go for this month. Now, um, with regards to the previous squares that you've knitted in February and March, it actually doesn't matter which option you go for. Um, it's not going to upset the rest of the design. So just go for whichever one you prefer. So let's take a look at those squares then. We're going to begin with square number nine, which is Toadstool. Toadstool option one is an Intarsia motif. It has hooked in and slip stitch beads and it has some chain stitch embroidery which is done after the square has been knitted, blocked and pressed. The black beads are hooked in and the velvet beads are added in using the slip stitch technique and it's the velvet beads that have pasture and barn red little chain stitch circles embroidered around some of them so just watch out for that on your chart you've got uh, a chart to work from and you, you've also got the image of the square that you can reference uh, to look at that embroidery so that you get those circles um, and the other details in the right place on your toadstool. 
it's a good one to try if you're quite new to intarsia because it's relatively simple to knit the blocks are quite large so i would give this one a go if you want to have a go at some intarsia knitting um you've all you've got the tech vid which will help you um, with the intarsia technique um, that was in last month's blog and there's also a new video this month for how to pick up in um, multicolour, which will be um, useful for the if you pick up the stitches to knit this square. So do check out that vid uh, if you're going to go for option one. If you fancy an easier square to knit for square nine, then uh, go for option two. This is an all over textured pattern with hooked in beads. It has a variable stitch count, which means that um, the number of stitches does vary throughout the pattern. And at the end of each row, I've written the number of stitches that you should have. It's a good idea as well to count those stitches at the end of, um, at the end of each row, if you can, just to make sure or count as you're going along to make sure that you've got the right amount. It's crucial that you do. But once you get into it, it's a really lovely pattern to knit. It's a 16 row pattern repeat full of hooked in beads. And I'm sure you're gonna have some fun with that one. The next square is square 10 bracken. There are no options for square 10. So everybody is knitting the same square. Now this is a pattern which is knitted over a four row repeat, but the, there's three colours in it which rotate round every two rows. So it's six colour stripe over a four row pattern repeat. It, that might sound quite complicated, but I can assure you that once you get knitting, once you get into the swing of it, it's actually really straightforward to do and very satisfying to do. I loved knitting this square. I really, really enjoyed it and I hope that you enjoy it too. It's one that you can settle down with, with a cup of tea and a biscuit and really, really enjoy without too much to think about once you get going. Square 30 is Forager. Now in the very first mail out in February, which seems ages ago, but it was only actually two months ago, uh, back in February, you knitted Forager 1. Um, so this is Forager 2 exactly the same pattern but different colours. So this is going over a bit of old ground, um, hopefully quite a, a, a nice easy one to knit as you've already knitted it previously, but um, there's some colour changes. So just read the pattern carefully. It's not the same as square 16. There are some changes to the colours, so just be aware of that when you knit this version of it. And finally for this month then, we have square 44, which is Hawthorne. Now, Hawthorne does have two options. There's option one that has some fair isle in it and option two, which has the beaded decorative loop stitch, which was knitted in L's and Imps and Pixies and Nixies option two. So just have a think about this one. Do you fancy doing some fair isle? It's only nine rows, 51 stitches with some hooked in beads? Or do you fancy doing that beaded slip stitch? It's totally up to you, this one. Um, go for whichever one you prefer. They both look lovely in amongst all the other squares. Um, just whichever one you prefer. If you haven't tried Fair Isle before, maybe this is a good one to, uh, to try it out on. It's, it's such a small section. And actually, having said that, the section, the section is repeated twice of fair so you've actually got 18 rows of fair alternate but it's a it's a small section one small section at a time very doable very manageable um i think you could do this one if you if you put your mind to it but i'm going to leave that decision up to you option one or option two that's your decision that you need to make when you knit square 44. Okay then, just a few more things before I sign off today and leave you to crack on with your April squares. So first of all, um, if you haven't signed up to our 2023 Mystery Cushion Club, there is still time. We have about half the memberships left, so a lot have already sold out, but there is still time for you to sign up. Now, our, our early bird offer of a free knitting kit has expired. However, as a Mystery Blanket Club member this year, you're entitled to 10% 
off your Mystery Cushion membership. So that's a great reason to go away and sign up. It's a brand new knitting adventure using the lovely, soft, beautiful Rowan Summerlight DK yarn in some lovely, really pretty uh, summer shades. A very, very summery project. Um, lots of lovely sparkling beads too. So I really hope that you decide to join me. We have packages for UK, Europe, the world. Um, you can add on your printed patterns. Um, all overseas are sent, tracked. UK, you can opt for special delivery if you want. It's all there on our website. Um, and I hope you decide to join me. It's going to be a lot of fun. We are still collecting donations for our Ukrainian Winter Warmers appeal. Um, we've had many donations sent in already, which we are very, very grateful for. And Sue and I have already been to the Peterborough group once um, to drop loads of stuff off. They were completely overwhelmed by the generosity of everybody that donated. Um, so if you have anything, hand knitted garments, accessories or yarn that you can donate, please do send it in to Sue. Uh, she already has uh, a, a small mountain growing in her front room of, of lots and lots of things that have been sent in. But uh, you know, we're still open to receiving bits and pieces from you. I will put Sue's contact contact details and her address in the written part of the blog. So do check that out if you've got something that you'd like to send in um, and it will be very greatly, gratefully received. Everything is forwarded on to those people in need in the Ukraine. Um, so thank you in advance for any support that you can give us. Now, in the autumn, I am launching a brand new club, a brand new mystery club, um, which I'm not going to say too much about now, but all I'll say is that watch out, watch your inbox at the beginning of May, because that's when I'm going to begin sign ups. Um, it's a project that's going to use row and yarn. Uh, there won't actually be any beads in this one. That might be a bit of a clue. That's all I'm going to say for now. Keep an eye on your inbox and there could be another very exciting knitting journey that you decide to join me on uh, this year. It will begin in the autumn, sign ups opening up in May. So keep an eye on your inbox. OK, so it's time for me to sign off now and leave you to get on with your April squares. Here in the UK, we're on the cusp of spring. The weather today, I think it's gone very dark, actually. Um, it, it's gone very, very dark, yet it's the middle of the day. Um, our weather is swinging from um, sunny one minute to sleet and rain and, and absolutely pouring rain the next minute. Um, it's a very mixed bag, but uh, spring is on its way and um, I'm certainly looking forward to some long, hot summer days, hopefully, in the garden, uh, knitting away. It's my favourite thing to do in the summer. So until next time then, until the beginning of May, when I will see you back here, do take care of yourselves, keep busy, keep those needles clicking away and enjoy your April squares. See you next month, everybody. Bye bye.